now we have completed module 1 then we have completed module 3 then uh, today we are going to discuss regarding module 4 in module 4 we will be discussing regarding disinfection and the miscellaneous treatment processes so we are right now we are uh, basically we are going to concentrate more on disinfection and miscellaneous treatment in the disinfection we are going to study what is the theory behind uh, disinfection what are the different methods of disinfection with its merits and demerits then we are going to see what is chlorination and breakpoint chlorination and a determination of chlorine demand right here we are going to solve some of the problems on the chlorine demand then estimation of quantity of bleaching powder that is required okay after this after disinfection we are going to see miscellaneous treatment processes in this we are going to see softening right softening by lime soda and a zeolite process estimation of hardness fluoridation and defluoridation that is in that we are going to see nalgonda technique then we are going to see what is ro and nano filtration process with its merits and demerits pause in the treatment plant we have seen the different uh, treatment units that is screening aeration sedimentation filtration and disinfection now in the screening we have removed larger floating elements then aeration we have intruded the air inside uh, the water then uh, we have seen what is sedimentation right here we have removed the suspended and settleable particle which are present in water then uh, the fine particles which are not removed by the sedimentation process here we have removed in the filtration process then the after filtration we are going to see today disinfection what is disinfection okay now what is disinfection as the name is suggesting disinfection that means the infection we are going to kill as all of you know that uh, the water will be having the micro various kinds of microorganisms in it right it is going to have the various microorganisms which is going to be harmful for the human body so we are going to kill these particular microbes in the disinfection process okay now i'll uh, define what is disinfection the process of killing of microbes which are present in water we call it as a disinfection okay and uh, the chemicals which we are going to use for this particular disinfection we call it as a disinfectants okay i'll define re repeat the definition the process of killing the microbes is nothing but the disinfection that means what we are going to do here we are going to kill the microbes which are present in water if we don't kill these particular microbes we are going to have the various kinds of waterborne diseases like typhoid dysentery cholera right etc etc kind of diseases we will be having if we don't kill these particular microbes to kill these microbes we are going to use the method called as an disinfection now we have uh, seen the filtration even see screening it is going to remove the biodegradable material there uh, when we are going to remove the biodegradable material the microbes the we eliminate some amount of microbes here also aeration also we are going to remove some of the microbes as we have discussed in the last classes we are here also we are going to remove some of the microbes sedimentation we can remove some amount of microbes sedimentation we can remove some amount of my uh, your, uh, your uh, microbes which are present in water and filtration you have, as we have seen the slow sand filter will be having around 98 to 99 percent of efficiency in order to remove the microbes but here in the disinfection we are not going to remove the microbes but we are going to kill them right we are going to kill them not removal direct killing will be there in the disinfection processes okay so this is regarding uh, the concept of disinfection now after adding some of the chemicals or some of uh, light right how the uh, the microbes are going to be get killed we are going to see in the mechanism of disinfection right when we are going to add some of the chemicals what it will do is it will going to 
damage the cell wall of microbes once the cell wall is going to be get damaged then the survival of those particular microbes will become difficult okay so first thing is we are going to damage the cell wall of the microbes then alteration of the cell permeability when we are going to add some of the chemicals then it is going to affects on the permeability of the cell then third point changing the colloidal nature of the cell and the protoplasm it is going to change the when we are going to add some chemicals what it will be do it will be doing the colloidal nature of the cell and the cell and cell protoplasm is going to be get changed then fourth lastly what is going to happen is inactivation of the enzyme systems responsible for meta metabolic activities once the cell wall is going to be get disturbed once the cell permeability is going to be get disturbed and then the colloidal nature cell protoplasm is going to be all if it is going to be get disturbed the metabolic activities which are required for the microbial activity is going to be get affected and ultimately what is going to happen is the microbes are going to be get killed okay this cell permeability it is going to supply all the required nutrients or all the food material that is required for the uh, microbes so if we are going to disturb or if we are going to do the alteration in this then again due to the lack of food the microbe is the metabolic activity is going to be get stopped and ultimately what is going to happen the microbes are going to be get killed so this is the mechanism behind the disinfection process now we will be concentrating on the various methods of disinfection see there are many methods are there in the disinfection method so in that we mainly classify the methods of disinfection into two types okay the first type is the physical method and the second type is the chemical method in physical method we will be killing the microbes which are present in water by boiling so first method in a physical method is boiling of water and the second method is by using the uv light then in the second method we will be having in the chemical method we will be having the three main methods first one is oxidizing chemical in that we are going to kill the chemical by halogen then chlorine and bromine treatment second one is by ozone treatment third one is by potassium permanganate treatment it comes under the oxidizing chemicals next is metal ions in metal ions we will be using two types of ions one is a silver ion then the other is copper ion and the third one is by using acids and the alkalis since acids and alkalis are going to be uh, due when we are when uh, the water has been added with the acids and alkalis survival of the microbes will become difficult in acids and alkalis and hence the microbes are going to be get killed all these methods of disinfection we are going to see in a minor methods of disinfection the methods of minor methods of disinfection will be including all these in case of your minor methods of disinfection so we are going to discuss in detail regarding the methods of disinfection in the minor methods of disinfection process so in the minor method of disinfection the first method is we are going to have the boiling of water second one is by using the ss lime third one is by ozone treatment iodine and bromine treatment uv treatment and potassium permanganate treatment and the last one is silver treatment so in examination they may ask you explain any one of these methods they may ask you in a exam right explain any of any one method minor methods of disinfection okay so we will be discussing regarding now the regarding the boiling of water now when we boil the water the temperature of that particular boiling water will be up to about 900 degree celsius when 100 degree celsius we are going to boil right there are three types of microbes are there one is sacrophilic mesophilic and thermophilic these bacteria will be active at the particular temperature okay thermophilic means they will be active above say 50 to 70 degree celsius mesophilic 20 to 40 or 50 degree celsius then sacrophilic they will be active up to about 10 or 20 degree celsius so when we are going to increase the the temperature when we are going to increase the temp, uh, temperature up to about 100 degree celsius what is going to happen is the 
last uh, temperature uh, how they can survive is up to about 70 degree celsius the microbes can survive now if you are going to give the temperature of around 95 to 100 degree celsius now this is an above above the reach of those or above the uh, favorable temperature conditions for those particular kind of a microbes so when we are going to increase the temperature the microbes are going to be get killed at this particular temperature so we are going to use the boiling this is a uh, physical it comes under the physical method now in boiling we cannot use this for the large city supplies or the large scale we cannot use boiling the first, the reason is it is going to be costly and beyond that it is not going to take regarding the further contamination now what is the further contamination means now when we are going to treat suppose this is your treatment plant right here if we use boiling method if we use boiling now the water will be getting disinfected here itself but when it comes to the community supply right when it comes to the community supply through the pipeline suppose if there is any kind of a breakages or any kind of a leakages are there then what will happen the water will outflow or say external material will come into this particular pipelines so when we are going to use boiling method what has intruded in the, inside this the soil or say any uh, foreign material will be getting entrapped into this particular the water lines now the foreign material will be having some amount of microbes now boiling method if you are going to use the boiling method will not take care regarding this contamination what is going to happen in the during the conveyance of water boiling only will take care at the care regarding the disinfection when it is at the treatment plant but when it comes outside if any leakage or any breakage is there it is not going to take care regarding the contamination which is going to occur yeah, when uh, uh, during the conveyance of water so that is the reason why we are not going to use boiling when at a large scale supply we can use it for the home purpose or when if we want the water at a minimum or minimum requirement is there then we can use it but it is not going to take care regarding the further contamination the, the next method after boiling is the treatment with excess lime now excess lime is we are going to use this particular lime for uh, for uh, uh, for having the disinfection process it is going to remove the party uh, the bacteria up to about 99.3 to 100 percent but basically the lime ward why we are going to use is we are going to use this for softening purpose when we are going to use the lime what it will do is it is going to raise the ph of water it is going to raise the ph of water say around 9 or 10 when we are going to use this pH up to about 9 now what will happen again in order to bring it to the standard pH level that is 6.5 to 8.5 again we need to remove the recarbonation process we have to go for the recarbonation process whatever the excess lime is there we need to remove it then only it will be coming under 6.5 to 8.5 now you are as we have studied in module 2 right your uh, drinking water standard limit is up to about 6.5 to 9.5 so it is going to bring the water beyond the 9 10 11 so again we need to have the recarbonation process as well as the lime um, if you are going to use the lime it is going to become costly so that is the reason why we cannot use this particular method by excess lime method we cannot use it now the next method is the ozone gas treatment now ozone gas treatment when it is going to be present when we are going to give the ozone treatment we will be passing that ozone uh, light with the help ozone light with the help of electricity first of all it is going to consume lot amount of electricity as as well as it is not going to take care regarding the further contamination like boiling it is going to take care regarding the only local disinfection will be done but it is when it is going to be passed to the community the, uh, through your uh, uh, the pipelines it is not going to take care regarding the further contamination so we are not going to it is costlier uh, as well it is costlier so that is the reason why we are not going to use this particular ozone treatment okay next method is uh, again we will be seeing some of uh, the advantages of ozone 
ozone being unstable nothing remains in water by the time it reaches the distribution system okay so ozone uh, it is also going to remove color taste and odor from water then uh, it becomes water becomes tasty and pleasant but why we are not going to use it is very costly it needs an electricity and no residuals can be maintained mm, as it is highly unstable okay so uh, and it is less efficient than chlorine in killing the bacteria and ozone it is a bit less efficient in killing the microbes okay the next method is the iodine and bromine treatment it comes under the chemical treatment method till your this is physical treatment this is chemical treatment again this is physical again this is your chemical treatment okay in iodine and uh, bromine uh, the quantity of this disinfection may be limited to about 8 ppm and contact period is generally 5 minutes and it is uh, the iodine and bromine are available in the form of uh, pills and very handy but these are not going to be so, uh, suitable for the large scale supply but may be used in treatment of the small water supplies okay so this is again we are going to use it at a large treatment supplies the next treatment method is ultraviolet treatment method right this you are familiar you are already familiar with this particular method because you use uh, the uv treatment in case of your uh, aqua guard or kent or uh, xyz uh, um, uh, instruments are there this follows the ultraviolet rays will be there in these particular instruments now the uv treatment will be helpful only at the small scale supplies it is not meant for the large scale supply the reason is again the same reason it is meant for the local disinfection not the community disinfection and one more thing is it is having a very small tube right it is going to have around uh, say uh, 10 centimeter uh, depth of water it is going to be operated with the help of quartz bulb and depth of water over the bulbs is uh, generally exceed 10 centimeter or so so it is not going to take a huge amount of water when uh, it comes to it has to be treated by the uv treatment and again one more restriction for this ultraviolet treatment is the water which you are going to use for ultraviolet treatment is it should be having the less turbidity it should have the proper ph value and it should have the less color in this and uh, it should uh, it should be properly ster uh, properly it should be sterilized so uv treatment will be having the disadvantages that it we want the turbidity up to about 15 mg per liter it should not be more than that and you know that water in the rainy season it will be a bit turbid in case of your rainy season so it requires the water to be having the turbidity less than 15 mg per liter and uh, so that is the reason why we are it, uh, we are not going to use this uv treatment but it is very helpful at a lower scale supplies next treatment is the potassium permanganate treatment in the potassium permanganate treatment we will be uh, at, we will be using this in order to disinfect the water in the wells might be you people also have um, done the, the disinfection of your well water now what we are going to do if this is having 100 to 98 to 100 percent removal efficiency uh, we are uh, we are going to add uh, so, uh, we will be taking how we are going to add in the well we are going to take some quantity of water then we are going to add the potassium permanganate in that we are going to mix it well and then we will be adding that particular water into well and that uh, the con the normal dosage of uh, your uh, potassium permanganate will be around 1 to 2 mg per liter and the contact period will be around 4 to 6 hours so after adding the potassium permanganate we should not utilize that particular water for about 48 hours okay so two days we cannot use that particular water because the traces of potassium permanganate will be there and it may give you the bad smell so we cannot use it for that particular time period the next treatment is silver treatment the silver treatment again it requires the electricity as well as it is uh, it is going to uh, uh, it is not going to take care regarding the further contamination right so that is the reason why we are not going to use the silver treatment in this particular method we are going to require around 1.5 volts of uh, current and the silver ions have a strong germicidal action and thus it is a 
disinfectant but again it is going to not going to take care regarding the further contamination so that is the reason why we are not going to use the silver treatment method